Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, this is HP Volume 1 PC, the model number 22-B009NA. So today I'm going to reinstall Windows 10 from this bootable USB. So I'm going to show you how to enable the USB boot in legacy environment. So this is the DVD disk, but nowadays not everybody does have it. So that's why I'm going to stick with that one. So first, what you need to do, make sure you do have one of them and we'll connect it to the PC and we'll change a couple of settings in the BIOS. So let's connect it first. All right. And once it connected, then we're going to turn this off and the switch is on the right hand side underneath this bezel. So push it down, force turn off. And then we're going to push it back to turn it on and straight away we're going to come back to escape ESC button which is left hand side on the top so keep pressing it and this one will take you directly to the startup menu so press F10 to get into BIOS main screen and that's the ordinary BIOS space as you can see so from the first one it shows all the information and this is the storage we need to come back to the boot option later on but first we're going to go to the security and check usb security option as you can see this is all enabled it's absolutely fine now let's go to secure boot configuration in the same menu at the bottom now press f10 to get it as you can see my legacy support is enabled it has to be enabled if you want disabled then what you should do go to the keyboard just make one click to the right arrow and as you can see now it's enabled so when legacy is enabled secure boot would be disabled by itself they are both one opposite of others as you can see so secure boot is disabled anyway which is absolutely fine and with these settings we're going to save it by f10 to accept it whatever we done now let's <clears throat> go back to advanced mode and from here we can see device options device options are absolutely fine which is enabled by default now let's go back to actual storage from storage the bottom option and the top option both of them are important from the top option it shows which one is the fast boot SATA as you can see 240 Kingstone SSD and USB is the second one. So those both are readable. This is the good option. When it's fine, then we're gonna to go to boot order. And once you hit enter, then it will take you directly. As you can see, the first source is UFI boot, but we need the legacy boot source, okay? And both of them are uh, visible, as you can see, it goes, uh, and all of them are not grayed out. So that's absolutely fine. So from here, what he can do without doing anything, we can just save the settings in that format, which is legacy boot source. We leave it like that and then press F10 to save it. Now let's go back to the actual file. From here, we're gonna save the changes and exit it, which is at the bottom. So save it, hit enter, yes. Hit enter again. And now the system going to restart and straight away we're going to go back to escape again or F9 directly to the temporary boot. So I'm going to keep pressing F9. It takes a little bit of time or escape, whatever you want. And then straight away F9 for the temporary boot. So from here, as you can see, I'm able to see my actual, um, this is the one USB, Kingston Data Traveler 3.0. That's the one bootable Windows 10 drive. Hit enter and now this one will take you directly to this setup page. It's gonna take a little bit of time. This sort of all-in-one PC, they're really slow. You know, uh, personally, I don't like it. And as you've seen inside in my previous video, the actual cooling fan is very small. Okay, that's the reason why I don't like it. Anyway, so this is the main page. From here, you can choose whatever you want. You can choose the language, you can choose the time and currency format and keyboard as well. So hit next. Once you do that, the setup is, will be started. And from here, sometimes it takes 
little bit of time. Don't be confused. Don't try to override anything. Okay. I pause the video, come back to this next page, accept terms and condition, hit next. And if you choose the bottom one, then that would be a clean installation. Okay. So we're, going, we're not going to upgrade it. We're going to reinstall it. So this is the actual drive, 240 SSD. And this one, if you want, you can make a partition, but I just want to keep it one because the actual drive is too small. Hit next. Once you hit next, then it's going to go back to actual Windows installation. By the way, this setup would take about 20 minutes, even more, or could be less. It depends on what sort of drive that you have. As I said, I installed uh, SSD instead of 3.5 inch SATA hard drive. So it's going to be much more faster than as it is. And if you do have 3.5 inch SATA hard drive, and if you have kind of Pentium processor, then it's going to be take little bit of time. And also it depends on what sort of USB stick you have. Nowadays, all the USB stick, most of them from eBay and stuff, you know, non-branded one, they are very cheap and doesn't work properly it takes long time i mean very slow so anyway in that way it's going to go up 200 percent it would take time it would take couple of free starts which is absolutely normal then it's going to go back to the final ask you a lot of permission about how it should react with keyboard settings regional settings you know update settings and stuff like that otherwise everything is fine so I'm going to pause the video right here and rest of them is so simple you can do it by yourself still if you do have any question make sure you leave it in the comment section I hope I'll see you in the next video bye for now thank you